Now listen, straight from the Bavarian Alps, Robin Williams. Hello, my name is Eminem. Or what Eminem will look like 40 years from now. Give it up, people. Represent. Let's take this off for any Jewish people who are watching. I am here tonight to talk about Pat McCormick. Pat McCormick has written for and acted with so many comedy legends that he himself has become one. The list includes Jonathan Winters, Johnny Carson, Danny Kaye, Lawrence Olivier, nope, Red Skelton, <laughs> Jackie Gleason, Jack Parr, Steve Martin, Bill Cosby, Bette Midler. As an actor, Pat appeared in three Smokey and the Bandit movies opposite Paul Williams and Burt Reynolds. In one of them, he played Burt's hair. <laughs> he was in several Robert Altman films, including Buffalo Bill and the Indians and The Wedding. His appearances with Johnny Carson, for whom Pat wrote for 12 years, numbered over 100. What are your plans for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow I'm having my own Thanksgiving dinner. Well, what will you, a turkey, eat, for, eat on Thanksgiving? A butterball farmer. <laughs> are, uh, are they any good? Well, they're a little chewy, but I like their giblets. I suppose you would. <laughs> well, it's really a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Turkey. I know your type. You act friendly now, but tomorrow you're probably going to bite into a turkey leg. Oh, come on. Actually, I prefer breasts. I've heard that. Never mind. <laughs> How did Pat McCormick get so funny? Well... Being born in Cleveland didn't hurt. Actually, Pat was born in a tiny suburb west of Cleveland called Rocky River, which sounds like a flavor after a little bit of mescaline. <laughs> According to Pat, the town was so small, the head of the mafia was Filipino. Right now, we cut to the airport. Keep going to the metal detector, please. Keep going. Take out your keys. Don't be afraid. People are coming to I was born in 1931, Pat says, on June 28th, 29th, and 30th. I was a very long baby. In spite of frightening childhood, Pat claims when his parents found out he was a bedwetter, they bought him an electric blanket. <laughs> now go to sleep, you little bastard. He ran track for the Rocky River High School. His record of conservative, uh, consecutive and conservative wins, if you're really keeping track. I never know that. I never know what to say now. I'm a compassionate conservative, which is like a Volvo with a gun rack. <laughs> Pat went on to Harvard University, where he also ran track, and later established another kind of record. He's the only Harvard graduate to appear on the gong show over 200 times. Unless, of course, you count that one time that William F. Buckley walked on and just said, what the hell, oh, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Pat is very proud of that record. At Harvard Law School, Pat always will be remembered as the student who wrote a paper on Massachusetts fishing laws from the point of view of the fish. <laughs> Pat McCormick has been blessed with a sense of humor as big as himself. How can, you tell us, how can you tell us when you're in an authentic Mexican restaurant? Well, when you walk in, there's salt around the toilet seat. I see. Uh -huh. and it's authentic. <laughs> Then it's authentic. Now, you went to the Bulimics Convention last month in St. Louis. What was the high point of the Bulimics Convention? When the cake comes out of the girl. I see. That's, that's it. There are a couple of stories about Pat. One of the stories is that uh, after the premiere of Under the Rainbow, uh, which sounds like a lovely evening with Judy Garland, but... He was on a plane with a group of uh, vertically challenged people, uh, little people. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm a little person. I'm 5'6". There was a lot of goddamn midgets. Okay. <laughs> Billy Barty um, was on the plane, and Pat went up to the front of the plane, picked up Billy Barty and said, I would like to thank the Academy. <laughs> Pat also said later that Billy Barty had willed his balls to a BB factory. The one the hotel I was in had a... First time I ever saw a sanitary strip across the bed. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Pat's signature piece of irreverence came in the form of the well-placed uh, well trouser drop. This was accomplished usually at speaking engagements, sporting events, funerals, and world-class opus inside Westminster Abbey in London. At each drop, Pat gave a total look of astonishment. He was also known to have a very short fuse with tourists. It is said that one time two tourists came up to him on Hollywood Boulevard and said, excuse me, could you tell me the way to the Hollywood Bowl? At that point, Pat brought out his very special map. He unzipped his fly, 
pulled out his penis and said, now imagine this blue vein is Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> now, my God, that's Gregory Peck going, I thought you'd never do that. You actually did a penis joke in front of the great white whale. At one of the Friars' roasts years ago, he announced that George Jessel, then in his 90s, would not be in attendance. He said, he's over at Cedars waiting for his next wife to be born. <laughs> he also described fellow Friar Red Button's age range as somewhere between, hey dude, and I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> About Johnny Carson, he said, Johnny has, a, has an uncle who used to breed sheep out in Montana until one day he said to himself, hey, sheep can breed themselves. <laughs> And they're so much fun, too, when you get their little boots and, uh, you know, you get their, their hooves in there and you're up against the cliff, they push back. <laughs> oh, they're Scottish people offended by that one. Do it, you dare! <laughs> it's not often you can get a meal and a sweater out of your lover. <laughs> Before entering the motion picture and television home two and a half years ago, Pat spent most of the 90s writing, doing radio and TV commercials, acting and appearing at conventions, club dates, private parties as a character whom he called the master of all information. You engaged in a menage a trois, is that right? That's right. What was the most difficult part of the menage a trois? I had to inflate the trois. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Almost ruined it. <laughs> For those of you waiting in the back, we have inflatable trois. Pat's fellow performers are frequent visitors. Many of them are members of Yarmy's Army a group of well-known actors and comedians who perform at a number of benefits in and around Los Angeles. Their yearly St. Patrick's Day party for Pat held in the rec room has become an anticipated event. My God, it's the cast of Liver Dance. <laughs> One night, this is the last story, Pat was walking outside the Braille Institute on Ventura Boulevard. Pat McCormick looked up to the second floor and noticed five or six totally darkened windows. Ah, he said, I see they're working late. God bless you, Pat. And finally, make your peace with God because he can kill you just like that. <laughs>